Good morning, everybody, and happy day 15 of Vlogmas. Ignore the hood, I'm cold. Today's very exciting because we are doing a workout from Fitness Blender, and Fitness Blender's in the bowl a few times, and a number of people have actually recommended that I take a class with Tasha. People have said to me before that our energies like go well together, like I would really vibe with her, so I'm excited to try an upper body workout from her today, specifically the no cardio upper body strength supersets within circuits. So let's start to get ready for the day, and we will chat a little bit more about what to expect. So from reading the very lengthy description. Seems like there's gonna be different circuits comprised of four exercises and two supersets within the circuit. First superset will target the same muscle group and then the second superset will target a different muscle group. So for instance, maybe it's like back and then shoulders, which I think is smart programming, especially in a workout that's under 30 minutes. I have to deal with this all the time. Like how do I get in a really concise strength workout without it turning into a cardio workout? Supersets are my favorite way to do this because you can work opposing muscle groups. And then instead of taking like a ton of rest during class, you're technically like resting the opposing muscle group while the other muscle group is working. Does it make sense? So I have a feeling today that is kind of what to expect. When I was scrolling last night, I also noticed that fitness Blender has updated their website since I've been there last and they have this little toggle where you can like toggle on or off if you want to see how many calories are burned during the workout. I do appreciate that. Like it, I, I, I've always felt like Daniel and Kelly, the founders, are really in tune with not only like updating their marketing and how they speak about things, but also just staying in tune with like what the general population wants and needs. I've gotten a handful of comments that have been asking me like why I'm so triggered by the calories being listed. And I wanna make it clear, I'm not triggered in a way where I'm like, oh, this is harmful to my mental health. I actually don't feel that way about calories at all. Calories are very like morally neutral in my mind, which is a good thing. If anything, it's just more annoying to me that I find it listed on so many workouts because it literally means nothing. Again, we talked, a lot more about this on day five. So if you wanna go back and watch that video, you're more than welcome to. But not only is it just genuinely inaccurate, like watches have been proven to be not accurate. The number listed isn't even specific to you, the viewer. And then on top of that, it is such a small, drop in the bucket of not only your day, but your week, your month, and your year. And you know, luckily I've grown out of that part of my life where I've associated working out as a way to just like burn calories and that's the only function of it. But unfortunately there are many people who haven't. And I just think that continuing to put this number on workouts perpetuates this little idea in the back of our brains that like, oh, well, this is why we're doing this, that we're doing this to burn. In the workout I'm doing today, it says it burns like 125 calories calories. Y'all, that's nothing. I probably burned 125 calories ranting about this right now. So for anybody who still thinks that I'm triggered by the number, I'm triggered by the stupidity of listing the number. So while I do appreciate that they toggle it on or off, I honestly, I just wish they would take it off. I chose the workout today because A, we have not done a just like by itself alone upper body day. So I'm excited to see that. Two, I'm excited to try one of Tasha's workouts and her programming and her energy. And three, I am feeling better today. Not 100%, but enough where I feel like I can pick up weights. Let's talk about the schedule today. About 7.15, I have a full body strength class that I'm teaching at 8 a.m. Then we're going to a gym in our neighborhood to train a client at 9.15. I've got an edit class from this morning. I have to finish filming some mobility drills for my clients. Then we're gonna do the workout. We'll come back and chat about it. And then I have another virtual client, another in-person client. We're gonna start to edit this vlog. And then I have one more virtual client at the end of the day. We definitely have a, a full day today. I'm gonna start to get stuff ready for class. And I will see you in a little bit.
the little makeshift desk down here. Let's chat. So we have two things to talk about. Was it science-backed and did I enjoy it? So we talked about the claims in the description earlier, but what are we looking for? It's an upper body workout. There's no cardio. And we're looking for two supersets that have opposing muscle groups working. It was definitely upper body focused. And I felt like the warm up did a pretty good job of priming us for the actual workout. You could see, for example, in the warm up, we did that good morning into the Y lift. And then in the actual workout, we did weighted Y lifts. So on the Caroline Gervin day, we talked all about the importance of warm up. So if you want to go back and watch that video, you can. You know, a warm up isn't just supposed to get your body physically warm. It's supposed to prime your joints in movement patterns that you're going to see in the actual workout. In terms of the actual workout, I really enjoyed the format. I thought it was smart, especially for an upper body workout that you're trying to get everything done in under 30 minutes. I especially enjoyed the short work time of just 20 seconds because you could really load up the weight and work for strength. Like I think there was rarely a time I got in more than eight reps of anything. So working in that four to eight rep range is a great way to actually build your strength in a YouTube workout like this. It felt like with the supersets, we were definitely doing like big lift and then like burnout lift. For example, in the very first superset, we did a military press, which you could load up pretty heavy. And then we went into these like mid range Arnold presses. So you wanted to take the weight down and you're working more in that mid range burnout. So full range of motion, burnout exercise. That was what most of the supersets ended up being. And I really liked that approach. The only circuit I thought was kind of odd was the second one, the one that was like very shoulder focused because I actually felt like both supersets were, it was just all shoulder. And again, if we think back to what this workout is kind of strategized as, it should have been shoulder and then something else. So we had that rainbow lateral to front raise, which is gonna work more of your mid and anterior delt. Then we went into those Y lifts, which will work your rear delt. Then we did the front raise with the high pull, which is gonna be more anterior delt and the crisscross, which is gonna be more anterior delt. And even though like, yes, the first two exercises technically were we're working more like front, mid, and then rear. It's all shoulder. There's such small muscles, like it, it doesn't really make that big of a difference when you're structuring it like this. So if we're looking at what the workout actually claims to be, and then look at what we actually did specifically in this circuit, that didn't really fit. And then my only other complaint is that we only did two sets of everything. I would have loved to do a third set for two reasons. Number one, it just would have geared itself more towards strength training. Like there's rarely a time where I'm ever gonna program just doing two sets of something. You ideally wanna be working between like three and five. And then it also just would have given our body more time like neuromuscularly to get confident in the movement. Again, we're gonna be lifting heavier because we're only working for 20 seconds. So probably like four to eight reps. But if we don't practice that stress enough, our body isn't gonna feel as confident in it. What I would have done is taken that bicep intermission and I would have replaced the second superset of shoulder exercises in that second circuit. And then I would flip that with the chest and back circuit. Then I would take the intermission of push-ups and use that as a finisher at the end. Does that make sense? Essentially what I'm trying to do is not stress the same muscle groups back to back because that's the point of this whole workout and the point of the whole structure. We're trying to work for strength in under 30 minutes so we really don't have the time to take one to two minutes of rest. So we're building in that rest by working opposing muscle groups. So for example, if we're working our chest and then we're working our back, well, when we're working our back, that's our chest rest time. So it's built into the program. Does that make sense? Overall though, I really did think that the structure and the programming was really comprehensive and smart for an upper body workout under 30 minutes. So for science backed, I am gonna give this a four out of five. Let's talk about enjoyment. I really liked this one. It also just felt really good to pick up weights again. I liked Tasha a lot. I thought her cueing was great. She gave modifications throughout, told us where we should be feeling things, made form corrections, and overall was just like living in the work with us. Now I did take a few alternate exercises and I don't want you to think that that is because Tasha programmed like bad exercises or something. It honestly just came down to like weight limitations. And then I am still like nursing my shoulder cause I did injure it a few months ago. And personally, I just know what I still need to strengthen. But I did find it was very easy for me to select alternate exercises while still focused on the why. Well, one, because I do this for a living, but two, because Tasha told us what we were working for. I just feel like when you're in tune with the why of the exercise, which comes from proper cueing, it's much easier for you as the client or as the person taking the workout to understand what you can sub in and still work toward the same goal. So even with modifications, I really enjoyed this workout. I'm gonna give it a five out of five. Let's pick tomorrow, woo! Can you see that I'm finally feeling better? <laughs> All right, tomorrow's workout is, oh, <laughs> this is our first double, it's Margaret again. All right, Margaret, everyone loves you, and so did I. All right, here we go. 
Mars workout is. <gasps> Sydney Cummings. Y'all, I'm pumped. I did a review of Sydney two, three years ago. It's gotta be close to three years ago now. It was the very beginning of the pandemic. And I loved her programming. So I'm very excited to revisit for that reason. Also, not to spill too much tea, I have heard some rumblings of like people not being super thrilled with her current programming and format. So I am very intrigued to see what's going on over there. To so come back tomorrow, see an updated review of Miss Sydney Cummings, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.